Tov Chavrim. I'm Stephen Ben Danoon, and you are watching Israeli News Live. We have some rather shocking, rather disturbing news coming out of Rome today. In fact, as you can see on the screen here, it is a meeting with Pope Francis, again, Bishop Tony Palmer, Kenneth Copeland, and a sort of delegation of other evangelical leaders. In case you guys do not recall, back a Oh, gosh, I don't know, was it a couple of months ago? Bishop Tony Palmer actually came and delivered a videotaped message with his iPhone to Kenneth Copeland here in the United States, a message sent to him by Pope Francis of asking them to come home to the Mother Church. It was embraced by Kenneth Copeland and the evangelical delegation that you see here now, along with literally hundreds at this meeting, to stand in applause. Let me just remind you, let's take a look again at what Kenneth, not Kenneth Copeland, but let's take a look at what Tony Palmer had to say as he expressed that he came in the spirit of Elijah. I believe that God has brought me here to this year's Minister's Conference in the spirit of Elijah. Let me explain. If you look carefully, the spirit of Elijah was on John the Baptist to turn the hearts of the sons to the fathers. And to turn the hearts of the fathers to the sons. To prepare the way for the Lord. And we know that prophecy always has a double fulfillment. And we know that Elijah will come before the second coming as well. And I've understood that the spirit of Elijah is the spirit of reconciliation. In the news broadcast or the news um, uh, media online uh, service, Now the End Begins, they reported about this meeting today and noted at the meeting in Rome, they discussed, among other things, the coming alliance of the Roman Catholic Church with the charismatic, of course, as they put it, apostates. I guess I could kind of side with that. This has already been in the works for uh, quite some time, and they feel very confident of making the merger. Of course, at first, it will be simply be, let's focus on what we have in common. <laughs> Absolutely. In other news, we also have the Presbyterian Church has been on the attack against Israel. Uh, in a news uh, that was posted on Israel's... Um, on uh, breaking uh, Israeli news, we have uh, some of the comments they put there. Jews and Christians around the world are in an uproar regarding the U.S. Presbyterian Church's recent vote to divest from three companies that have business in Israel. At the church's annual General Assembly in Detroit on Friday, members of the church narrowly voted 310 to 303 to withdraw investments worth $21 million from Caterpillar, Hewlett Packard, and Motorola. We as a church cannot profit from the destruction of homes and lives, Reverend Grady, excuse me, Grady Parsons said in the statement about the decision. We continue to invest in many businesses involved in peaceful pursuits in Israel. Critics of the decision are lambasting the church for supporting the international boycott, divestments, and sanction movement against Israel. You know what? Just, you can't help but think about how that the Bible prophesies that you won't be able to buy or sell unless you take this mark. So, you know, and it is going to come from the church. Now, the Vatican will spearhead it. The Prime Minister had a very interesting message for Christians, the Presbyterian Church in general. Take a look at what he had to say here. An enormous area riveted by religious hatred, by savagery of unimaginable proportions. Then you come to Israel and you see the one democracy uh, that upholds uh, basic human rights, that guards the rights of all minorities, that protects Christians. Christians are persecuted throughout the Middle East. So most Americans understand that Israel is a beacon of civilization and moderation. You know, I would suggest to uh, this Presbyterian organizations to fly to the Middle East, come and see Israel for the embattled democracy that it is, and then take a bus tour. Go to Libya, go to Syria, go to Iraq, and see the difference. And I, I would give them two pieces of advice. One is Make sure it's an armored-plated bus. 
And second, don't, uh, don't say that you're Christian. Also, I'd like to bring to your uh, memory here so that we do not forget the three kidnapped young men in Israel. Ayal Yafrach, who is age 19, Gilad uh, Sha'ar, age 16, and Naftali Frank Frankel, age 16 as well. These three young men are still, this is the ninth day that they, are been, they have been missing or, or kidnapped, as we know by the Hamas group uh, in, uh, the, in Israel. And we are praying for their safe return. We ask you, we actually started on our Facebook page, Stephen Danoon. Uh, we have started a, a round-the-clock prayer uh, uh, vigil, you might call it, or meeting that, that if you would like to go to our Facebook page, you can find that post where we speak about this. We are looking for people that would be willing to pr pray in 15-minute increment blocks, 15 minutes, 30 minutes, 45 minutes, or even an hour around the clock until God delivers these young men back home. Anyway, uh, in final news I wanted to bring to your attention as well, and that is that Joel Osteen now has gone to the Vatican as well. The Pope invited him there to actually, uh, well, more unity, bringing all this in. And then, of course, if, if nothing else, we also have the first Chrislam church being erected. Well... You know, I cannot help but think when people look around, they say, well, the Antichrist that will come, which in many cases people believe to be the Mahdi or a Muslim Antichrist, that he will be a charismatic leader and that he will reunite the world's religions and that we would have one world religion. Does it seem like we have to look very far for that now? I mean, I guess Pope Francis just really doesn't look like the guy, does he? Maybe something's wrong here. Maybe we're not noticing the fact that this man, Pope Francis, is uniting the world like never before. Not just the churches. He's uniting nations, politics, religion, everything. But you know, another thing that comes to mind when it says peace and safety, and yet sudden destruction comes. Well, he claims to be a peacemaker. But really, there is no peace. He's only there to see that Israel is destroyed, that he might be able to gain control of the holy city. I'm Stephen Ben Danun with Israeli News Live. Good evening.